hi and happy Father's Day uh, to all you amazing fathers out there. Uh, it's a joy and privilege for me and uh, part of Life Focus Society to interview Mr. George Matikal, who many claim is an amazing father. He's an amazing dad. So we will have this privilege of exploring this. I'm looking forward to asking you certain questions, understanding your insights and how you have been a dad all these years. Let me start off by asking you if you could uh, tell us a bit about yourself, uh, what you do, uh, your marriage and the children that you raise. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me and uh, happy Father's Day to, to all the fathers out there. Uh, yeah, so to, to uh, just give a little bit of a brief background about myself, uh, you know, I was actually, I'm a fairly international person. I was born in Africa, uh, only lived for about uh, four years of my childhood in India then moved to the Middle East and uh, after that I went to the UK to finish my high school and then did all my college, uh, college studies in the United States. So uh, then I graduated from there uh, with a degree in computer science and, uh, and an MBA and went to work for an IT company, IT services company based in Canada called CGI. And I just finished 32 years with that company, worked with them in the US for many years and uh, and uh, later, more recently, in, in India. So I was married uh, to uh, Sarah, my wife, uh, in, uh, in 1993. And uh, we, were, uh, we were settled in the U.S. And we had, uh, um, you know, God blessed us with, uh, with several children. In fact, that's one of those things we had, uh, we had sort of uh, decided that we were going to leave it to the Lord as far as, you know, how many children we were going to have. And, and uh, sure enough, the Lord blessed us with... Uh, uh, with seven children while we were in the U.S., so five boys and two girls, and uh, then um, and we did a lot of things differently. We wanted to raise them, you know, raise them up for the Lord. So one of the things we did that was quite different and unique at the time, maybe not as much today, is uh, is that we homeschooled them. So we taught them at home rather than sending them to secular schools. Uh, again, to give them a biblical foundation based uh, education, uh, and then um, you know, as we move fast forward a little bit. Uh, you know, in uh, in 2008, 2009, uh, you know, my company gave me an opportunity to move to India because our, our business here was growing and they wanted some executives to come over. And at that point, I had, uh, Lord had blessed me professionally as well. And I was, uh, I was a vice president in the company, managing several clients. And uh, so, you know, we prayed about it um, and we felt the Lord leading us to, to move to India, uh, not only for professional reasons, but also you know, for proximity to our parents who were, who were getting older and were here in India. Uh, and we thought it would be a great opportunity for the children to experience the Indian culture, although they were all born and brought up in the U.S. And, uh, uh, and then um, uh, also, of course, uh, we felt there would be many more ministry opportunities for us, which is something we were both passionate about. So we moved here, and then the Lord again blessed us with two more children while we were here, so we were up to nine at that point. But then, uh, you know, right after uh, our ninth baby, a boy was born, uh, my wife, uh, Sarah, had a heart attack, a really bad heart attack. And she had been uh, apparently having these problems in her heart that we were not aware of. And about a month after the baby was born, she went to be with the Lord. So, uh, so, that's, um, uh, so that was, of course, a very challenging time uh, for us. But, uh, you know, the Lord has been faithful. And I'm sure we'll get an opportunity to talk, talk about that as we yeah, as we go absolutely. through this conversation. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, uh, since then, you know, I can say the Lord has been faithful. He's blessed us. He's, we managed to get through it by his grace alone. Uh, and uh, the Lord has also blessed me professionally. So uh, about six years ago, uh, I was uh, asked to step up and take the role of president for our Asia Pacific delivery centers in India, the Philippines and Malaysia. So, so today I'm managing about 20,000 people. Uh, I'm also serving as an elder at Grace Bible Fellowship in Koramangala. Before that, I was at Calvary Bible Fellowship, which meets in Alsur. Uh, and Grace Bible Fellowship is a church that we just planted this year. So, uh, you know, for the last uh, 13 years, I've been part of part of this church and been able to uh, really see the Lord bless the ministry there as well in terms of, uh, you know, growing the churches that we've been a part of. Oh, wow. Fascinating. I'm so sorry to hear um, about what happened with the family. Uh, can you share a bit about your journey as a, as a father mm -hmm. overall, but also as a, as a, as a widower uh, sure. in the past 10 years? What are some of those challenges? that? Yeah, you, you know, uh, being, uh, Jacob, being a father is always a challenge <laughs> in normal times. But certainly, you know, when you lose, uh, 
when you lose your partner, uh, it becomes a, a double challenge, right? And, and I certainly went through a period of struggle uh, probably for the first couple of years just coming to terms with it because there was a lot of things that didn't make sense and I went through the usual questions of why did why would God allow that you know my wife was a very dynamic uh, talented individual she was a musician she composed uh, she was very active in the ministries in the church and was a real blessing and so it didn't make sense but uh, you know through that ultimately it was my faith in God that that stood firm and coming to terms with what the sovereignty of God really means. Now, I was, I was a, uh, you know, I am a Bible teacher. I had taught about all these topics, you know, for many years. I could, I could you know, give you a sermon on the sovereignty of God. But, but this was an experience of, you know, the rubber meeting the road and, and understanding how sovereignty plays out in real life, right? And so, uh, ultimately, I came to realize that, you know, uh, that I needed to depend on God. And, and as I look at how... I've gone through life uh, the last uh, 10, 11 years. Uh, you know, I, my mind always goes back to Philippians 4, 6, and 7, right, which says, you know, be anxious for nothing. Uh, but by prayer and supplication, with, with uh, thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And then the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, right? And, and it's not to say that I've always done that, but that's been a beacon for me that whenever I get anxious, you know, I always go back to the Lord, and the Lord has been, uh, yeah, the Lord has been gracious. I mean, we have experienced, uh, you know, Paul. Uh, Paul talks about, you know, the thorn in the flesh, and he asked God three times to remove it, and and the Lord's answer was, you know, that he was not going to do that. But he says that, you know, my grace is sufficient for you, right? Uh, and my uh, my strength is made perfect in weakness, and and uh, you know, the Lord has been gracious. So how has he been gracious? Well. Uh, you know, many, many ways I could, I could recount, but, uh, you know, he brought people around us, especially from our church family who really embraced us, who uh, supported us, especially through those early years. And now, you know, the children have grown up and we don't need it as much, but they're still there. But during those early years, they pretty much held us up. Um, you know, he's been gracious in that, you know, I mentioned we want to have a big family, right? And, and of course, when, when my wife passed away, people were like, oh, how sad that he's got all these kids he's got to raise and 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 you know and I really came to understand how that was part of God's perfect plan because you know when my wife passed away my oldest daughter was 17 uh, and uh, and she really stepped up to help take care of a lot of things and 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 as she moved on to college there was always you know another person another person another person each of the children they they just stepped up took care of each other took care of their siblings and so I've experienced the grace of God in that and having a big family has actually been a blessing through this, which is not something you would have you would have normally yeah. thought right in these circumstances. Yeah. Um, you know, the Lord has been gracious in that he's helped the children to really be strong. Right. And and not, um, you know, and really adjusted well. And that's a grace. I mean, you normally expect children would have a lot of trauma and a lot of psychological issues. You know, it's not to say they haven't struggled and some of them still struggle with this but nevertheless you know they they were able to really uh, be strong through this process right and uh, and you know the lord has has been gracious in so many ways you know i uh, uh, you know one of the one of the things i learned through this jacob is is to take one day at a time right and not think too far into the future you know the lord said uh, you know in one of his parables that you know tomorrow has or today has enough problems don't worry about tomorrow so so you know rather than focus on the future you know, it's it's been really uh, about staying focused in the present and thanking the Lord for getting us, uh, getting me and my children through one day at a time, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and how has God, has the Lord been faithful? You know, one of my sons got married just uh, just two weeks ago, and uh, you know, and I, I sort of was was make, was giving a little bit of a speech at his reception, and and I recounted a little bit about the uh, the faithfulness of God, and and I measured it, just trying to quantify it a little bit. And, you know, when, when, when my wife passed away, I had nine children and, uh, you know, and I wondered how we were going to get through, right? But, uh, but as I look back now, 11 years later, uh, you know, I've graduated six kids from high school, five from college, uh, four are working, two have been married. I've got two wonderful uh, God-fearing daughters-in-law. And uh, uh, so as I look at that, you know, I just give all glory to God. You know, he has, he has been faithful. George, um, you're involved 
from uh, what you do. You're involved in so many aspects. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your ministry life, right. and then you have a very demanding mm -hmm. work schedule, uh, uh, being the president of uh, mm -hmm. Asia Pacific. And then you have a family of right. nine children. Of course, you said at different points, each mm -hmm. each child stepped up yep. through that. Uh, but how have you been able to navigate mm. through these different? Yeah, see, I think uh, a lot of people ask me that even even at my workplace. Uh, uh, but one of the things that I've figured out is you know is 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 really taking a biblical perspective to every area of your life, right? And and you know you never stop being a father or a husband or a um, you know, or a, or a son, right, or a, a worker, or an executive at the company, or you know, an elder in a church. These are all things that you need to integrate into your life, and and you've got to do all of them to the glory of God. So I don't, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of work-life balance. Uh, I, I I I've got a different term I use, which is work-life integration. So I never stop being any of those roles at any point in time, and so I'm always going back and forth. You know, within an hour. You know, I might be focused on my work for 10 minutes and if something comes up, you know, I use technology, I might get involved in a problem at church, I might, uh, the kids might reach out for something, uh, but all of it ultimately comes down to keeping yourself spiritually sharp, spending that time with the Lord and, uh, and just sort of taking a day at a time, right, and not trying to plan too much, not, uh, you know, always being, uh, knowing what to prioritize at a given point in time and trusting the Lord to provide. So, you know, when I go on outside trips, the early years, you know, sometimes I would take the baby and leave him with somebody at home, right? Um, but now we don't have to do that anymore. He's not a baby anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's really adjusting through the seasons of life and just trusting that the Lord will allow you and provide for your needs, uh, whatever they are, uh, you know, at any point in time. And, and, you know, just maybe I'll just make one point. You know, when I remember once when I was I was in the U.S. traveling, and one of my kids, one of my sons, uh, got dengue. Okay, and uh, you know, I wasn't here. He had to be admitted to the hospital. And the Lord just sent people, you know, our church family, to to take him to the hospital, admit him, somebody to stay with him, roster people to be with him for almost a week while he was there. And so, you know, when the Lord and, and I, I really believe, you know, in you know the way I approach it is that the Lord allowed this to happen, right? And so I have to rely on the Lord and not on myself. Uh, and as I said, you know, from my experience, he's been faithful in the past. And I know he will continue to be faithful. Uh, and that's sort of the way I navigate through uh, through all of those different roles. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, another thing we would like to hear is what are some special traditions or practices mm -hmm. that you have with your children? And how have you been able to foster a love for Jesus for them, mm -hmm. you know, what, what type of spiritual uh, formations have you right. been able to engage or inculcate? Yeah, so um, probably I, I would say the most important um, practice that we have, we had this even when my wife was there and, and I've managed to continue it, is, is really having that uh, what we call the time of family prayer or some people call it family altar, right, uh, which we do twice a day. So we do it in the morning, we do it in the evening. Uh, and we spend time, we sing, we spend time uh, reading, reading from the word and, and praying uh, as a family. And we and we've we've kept that tradition going, uh, you know, throughout as long as, uh, you know, as far as I can remember. Something that started with my parents who would wake me up at five in the morning to do that. And, and we've managed to carry that on. And it's become so ingrained that, you know, when I'm not at home, uh, whoever the oldest child is, you know, he or she makes sure that it's done. Right. And they carry that one. The second thing I would say is, is just being involved in the church. Okay. Uh, I mean, we have continued to be involved. I've continued to be involved. It's very easy when you go through crises in life to back off, right, and focus on yourself. And, uh, you know, I felt that that was not the right thing to do. And, uh, and that's a good example for the children because I'm involved, they're involved, you know, going to church, going to the meetings of the church uh, are things that, um, you know, that, uh, that, that, that they know is important. Right. And so that builds in uh, to them a love for the Lord, uh, you know, and uh, and so those are just just a couple of things that I would uh, I would point to. Where are your children now? I know that they're mm -hmm. dispersed all over the yeah. world. So. Yeah. So it might take a while to go through all of them. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, my oldest daughter, uh, she uh, she's a journalist. So she came back to India and she works for Reuters uh, news agency uh, here in Bangalore. So she stays with me. So she's a big help. Um, you know, and uh, uh, then uh, then I've got uh, four boys after that, 
right? And the four boys, uh, one is uh, two are married. Uh, all three have uh, three of all four have graduated from college. Uh, three of them are working. Uh, one's sort of looking for a job right now. He just graduated a couple of months or last month actually. Um, and uh, then I've got uh, a daughter who's in college. She's uh, in second year in the U.S., uh, moving on to a third year. And then I've got three younger ones with me who are uh, at Heritage International here in Bangalore, and aged uh, 15, uh, 13, and, uh, and 11. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think um, uh, definitely your struggle is, uh, is, like I would say, like an exceptional one, but God, from what you say, I see that God has given you the grace mm -hmm. and support structures that mm -hmm. are there. Uh, is there any practical advice or strategies mm -hmm. that you can help, uh, you can give others? I'm, I'm a father of a small daughter, mm -hmm. and we'll be expecting one uh, soon in the coming month. Is there any practical advice or tips that you could give me and other fathers yeah. out there? Sure. I mean, I, I can try. I, I don't know that, um, you know, I don't have any, any uh, you know, magic uh, <laughs> uh, strategy or, uh, or a formula that's going to yield results, right? Uh, but I, I'll just say a few things, uh, you know. Uh, first of all, you know, for me, uh, the vision, um, you know, that, that the Lord laid on me many years ago regarding raising children uh, comes from Deuteronomy 6, okay, with, where he says, uh, uh, you know, love the Lord your God. He's talking to Israel and he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, all your strength. And then as you read down, uh, you know, it says, uh, and, uh, and all these things I have taught you, you teach them to your children, right? And you teach them you know, to do that, to love the Lord their God with all their heart, soul and strength. And you do it while you're sitting down, while you're uh, walking by the wayside, while you're lying down, um, you know, with the environment around your home. And those are just the practical ways you do it. Now, now between those two parts where he talks about the vision of, you know, loving the Lord and then teaching it to children, there's a little snippet that we always gloss over, right? And it says, you should make this real in your own heart. Right? So you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. And that speaks to me about uh, being an example. Right? So your children learn most from example. Okay? Now, have I been uh, a great father in every way? And one of the things uh, is that you know, people say, well, you have to be a father and a mother. Actually, that's not even possible. Okay? And I've never put that pressure on myself. You know, it's been, you know, the, the word of God says, you know, that, uh, you know, God in Psalm 68, I think that, uh, you know, God is a father to the fatherless and a defender of widows. You could turn that around and say he's a mother to the motherless and a defender of the widower. But, um, you know, uh, that's something that I've laid on God to provide. Okay? I cannot provide what a mother would have. And certainly they've lacked that. But God has been gracious. Right. So but the thing that I've been able to that I've focused on is being an example in my own life and even. Uh, you know, by the grace of God, all my children, they, they respect me, they honor me, um, you know, they respect the example that I've set, the, what's been a priority to me, whether it's the church or how I conduct myself uh, at work uh, with them, with, uh, with church activities. Uh, and that's something that I find as a more lasting impact on them, right? And, and then, you know, ultimately not focusing on the results, okay? Because I, I don't think sometimes we, we have these ideal, I also had them. Okay, idealistic um, notions of what our children should become. Um, and the Lord has taught me a lot uh, in these years uh, that, you know, I really don't have control over that. You know, I can do everything possible. I mean, I've seen uh, children coming out of, uh, you know, the worst backgrounds as far as parents go, becoming wonderful, you know, believers in Christ and, and, uh, and going on that way. On the other hand, I've seen the flip as well, right? The other side of it, where people who come from very, children who come from very godly families going very wrong. Yeah. And so, you know, what I believe God calls us to is be faithful, right? Be faithful to your calling to live uh, your life as a believer in Christ, to perform all your roles according to the word of God, right? You know, when, when Jesus talks about the talents, right? He, uh, the, the, the person that got the five talents and the two talents, he doesn't commend them for, for, for how, they, how many talents they came back with. He said, good and faithful servant, you know, enter into the joy of your master. So I think that's what God is looking for us to be faithful stewards. And so setting that example, being faithful to what God has called us to, you know, I think that is ultimately what we can do, right? And today, you know, when I look at my kids, as they grow up, you know, they, they develop a mind of their own. Uh, and sometimes it can be frustrating, you know, because I had this image of what they should be. And maybe they're not going, you know, some of them may not be going quite 
in the way they want. The Lord has taught me that you know you've got to you've got to let them go on that journey. Uh, you've got to be there to love them, continue to set that example, right? Admonish them when needed. Uh, but they need to make the faith their own. They need to, you know, carve out their own path in the journey. Uh, they need to go through the struggles of life and. God needs to reach them through those struggles, right? So, so I, if I boil it all, all down, I would say, you know, if you want to be a godly father, be a godly man. Okay, so focus on, on your own godliness, right? And then that will translate into not just as a father, but as a husband, as a worker, as an employee, as an employer, whatever role that God has given you as a leader in your church, uh, you know, and you set that example, be faithful and, uh, you know, and leave the results uh, to the Lord. Thank you, George. Thank you for your time. I know Thank that you. you're a busy person. But thank you so much for carving out time and coming and doing this interview. It's been such a blessing. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.